Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Well, joining us now, The Guardian columnist Zoe Williams, The Spectator editor Fraser Nelson, and Tony Blair's former chief speechwriter and now Times journalist Philip Collins. Uh, we have it. We have straight talking, honest politics. Did any of it stack up in John McDonald's speech today? Well, he didn't say very much. I thought that most of the things we expected him to say that we heard in Jeremy Corbyn's leadership campaign have sort of disappeared. And that seems to be the theme of the week. I mean, people's quantitative easing, well, that's gone. Um, the transformation of capitalism seems to be proceeding extremely slowly. They're running away, Zoe. <laughs> the, the people's QE will be back, I think, in Corbyn's oh, speech. There's absolutely no way. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, <laughs> Richard makes. Murphy, the, edit, the, the author of Corbynomics, is here. And I'm sure if the people's QE had been stripped out he would have been crying somewhere in a puddle so that hasn't gone you're absolutely right though that mcdonald and his kind of whole acceptance of osborne's running a surplus the whole the whole acceptance of the way the debate is framed is really really surprising and i went out to get my son a birthday present i got him some transformers robots in disguise and a colleague said is that the new labor party robots in disguise Fraser Nelson, I mean, there are now six great economists, and not least Joe Stiglitz. Well, six economists, but um, <laughs> the, 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 the thing is, it shows how far the Labour Party has gone, whereby we think this was mild. I mean, here in this, I can't think of the last time a shadow chancellor stood up and shouted about socialism being a good thing. He's talking about neoliberalism, one of these weird words that the hard left use. He's broadcasting in a wavelength for Labour Party members, but not the country. And sure, by his standards, this was relatively sane, but that shows what sort of madness has gripped the party overall. But that's quite a good point though, isn't it? When, if you're looking at a situation in which the words they're using are sound kind of hard left, but the policies they're talking about are kind of indistinguishable from what Ed Balls might have said, well, then you kind of wonder what I, the I message think it, is. I think actually. it was quite Ed Balls-like. And we've got to remember that on the, the last election, the evidence is very clear, Labour lost because they didn't have a viable Prime Minister and because they were not trusted yeah, on the economy. Phil, before and the he's study, just repeating two, the same no, policy. No, two weeks ago you were saying Labour lost because they were too left wing. Then the study came out and said Labour didn't lose because they no, were too left wing. And now you're oh, saying... I missed that study. Oh, well, the general election was proving that yeah, they weren't yeah, left wing enough. <laughs> which is actually, why Jeremy Corbyn's going to no, say no, that, that That actually wasn't. It, what it found was that the whole kind of canard about whether they were too left wing hadn't played at all. It wasn't really about that. Yeah. But and that, they, and that, that's what John McConnell believes which is why he's coming out with this stuff now. I mean, only in Westminster would it seem mild. The average person listening would think they're just talking about strange things that people don't understand or can't comprehend. Like, is Britain really run by a rich cabal? Is it so strange to ask that Google pays taxes? Oh, no, not at all. Of course not. Did you obsess about it? No, it's, well, not, it's not strange look, at all. So, so some, of the, some of the numbers are, of course, fantasy. The idea you can get 120 billion or something. It's, it's already come down to 20. But no, of course, there's nothing wrong or strange with, with, with that bit. But it was a repetition of an economic policy we, we've already heard. And the thing that we'll get out of it eventually is spending cuts, no, therefore the money's got to come from somewhere, so in the end that will mean tax rises. No, and that's I, how it will be translated into real language. To be honest, that's not what's going to happen. Re I think what they're doing is they're, they're, they're setting out a stall while the debate catches up about whether you need to run a surplus or whether you can run a deficit. When it, when it kind of transpires, when they actually get different economic messages out there, they'll be able to say running a surplus is a pointless, a pointless need no, for the, any government. But they're, they're totally and opposed to austerity, by which he means cuts. And yeah, fair enough, yeah, fair yeah, enough, yeah, yeah. that's his position. But, at the moment, if but you're that totally has if an you're, implication for spending, I know, it? Phil, but listen, if you're opposed to austerity and yet you have to run a surplus, of course that has an implication for taxation. But if you don't want to run a surplus because a surplus is just destroying money supply, yeah. then you can look at the is, is there anything so very wrong about going to 50%? 50% of what, sorry? Uh, income tax. Oh, income tax. Well, probably, I mean, look, uh, Piketty, one of the advisors, wants to go up to 60, 70, even higher. But it's just the language, it's the body language. It's also the kind of themes that they're campaigning on. These, it's not so much the policies themselves, it's what you choose to compete, how but you if sell you're yourself about to the body country. Language, who's worried? <laughs> when did body language get anyone awake at night? Well, the, the, we've now got a, you know. <laughs> well, <laughs> the, this, is the, this is the Wilfie Smith <laughs> body language. This is power to the people. This is, he finished his, his speech with the word solid. Solidarity, which sounds like a sort of Billy Elliot song rather than a Shadow Chancellor speech. I mean, this is well, the voters don't like that sort of thing when it was offered to them at the last election. They're not going to like it when they get double the amount now. The thing is, Fraser, it's very easy to say I understand what the progressive side wants in the ballot box, but actually. 
you don't understand and the Labour Party as was didn't understand and I don't think framing the country as a solid mass of people who all want a particular thing is a very useful no, cephalogical device. You, he didn't give you what you expected or wanted particularly, did he? Oh, nobody he's ever moved does. Quite, he's moved quite a long way from what you anticipated a yeah. Corbyn, McDonnell Does it feel like a revolution though? No, 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 no. No, but they don't want one. You, he, all, his main agenda is to survive the next six months, yes. then the revolution will. <laughs> and right now this whole conference is saying, please Mr. Manderson, we'll, we'll don't kill us now. We'll get you back in six months' yeah. time and review what happens there. <laughs> so Fraser Nelson, Zoe, and thank you very much, Philip, as well. Well, our political editor, Gary Gibbon, joins me now. Gary, where are you? Right here. Gary, uh, tomorrow he speaks, Corbyn speaks, and I gather from an auto queue. So something new there. Yes, one concession to the 21st century. He won't be getting his wife up for a kissy-kissy moment at the end, nothing like that. I don't think we're going to have throbbing music in the warm-up uh, video. In terms of the content, I think he's going to try to, I would very much expect him to try to neutralise the patriotism issue. A man who uh, didn't sing God Save the Queen, he actually turned around and told someone I know he didn't know the words, which is, takes some uh, believing. They're quite straightforward. Uh, and I think he's also uh, going to try and say that his is a kind of politics. An awful lot of people in this party will take some convincing of that. They see this as the phony war when people might be a bit lovey-dovey, but they think menace lurks. Gary Gibbon.